spoke regarding adab, punishment. Adab Allah. Because the adab, the wrath, the punishment that Allah Ta'ala sends down to the individual. This is the biggest, most dangerous thing. The most dangerous thing. That individual who is saved from Allah's punishment, then in this world he stays successful and he has a beautiful life and he has a beautiful morning. He has an excellent task during the day. He has a very nice occupation or job. He has nice wife and children. He has a nice sleep. Feels nice sleep, a nice sleep at the end of the day. And everything of his, of his is incomparable. Why? Because he's an individual who's saved from Allah's adab, Allah's punishment. All of success for the human being is based on this one point. Listen to this care, clear, carefully. That we individuals, human being, a human being should save himself from Allah's punishment. Just like we save ourselves from the difficulties of the world and we get rewards for that. Then many, many times over the reward to be saved from Allah's azab, you get in the hereafter the reward. Many times over. That person's death is an excellent death. The person who remained away from Allah's punishment. Rather this happiness and he's grateful that I have departed this world. That person who during life, his life, he saved himself from Allah's azab. He has a beautiful night in the grave. That person who stayed away from Allah's punishment. And the grave for that person is a nice place of rest. He who stayed away from Allah's azab. And his grave becomes a portion of paradise. It becomes a percentage of paradise for that person. And most dangerous for that person, if we look in the light of the Qur'an and the Hadith, very severe place, we are warned time and time again. Hashr, death, hereafter. Hashr, how the world will end for that person. And that time, how people will come out of their graves, in which condition they will come out, with regards to that, you keep on listening to the Hadith about this. And this will happen to us. Not this, that after dying we're free. No, 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 another life will start. Another life will start. That I don't want to make Allah unhappy with me. That's it, we can all do this, all of us. Because we want to be saved. That's it, all these things I've told you, do you want to attain them? So for that there's one preparation we need to do, one action to prepare. One action to prepare. Yes, put everything else to the side. Just let me tell you, straight forward, summarize deen I will tell you today. Somewhere from morning until evening, we just need to be concerned about one thing, that I don't want Allah's punishment to come near to me. Say subhanAllah. That's the end of the story. I swear by Allah, it is the Quran, this is the Sunnah Sharifah. If you take the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you practice on the orders of the Quran, then it's totally like when you weigh or measures and weights on a scale, that's how you'll be practicing the deen in a balanced way. And if you go against the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and you oppose it or you reject it, the Qawmi Nasi Bil Qist, Allah says, the Qawmi Nasi Bil Qist, Allah says, if you go away from that, then your deeds totally straight, they should be honest and straight. Bil Qist, balanced. This is the meaning, isn't it? That your deeds, your actions should totally be honest and straight and clean, not twisted. And they will only be straight and in order and they'll be weighed in a balanced way when you have the scale that's correct within which the deeds can be balanced out properly. So those are comes when they come to you, the orders, then just like that scale, if you are following the sunnah, then your deeds that will be upon that scale, then never will you go into excess and your deeds will never go to waste. Never go to waste. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the Quran that's explaining this to us. Where is it written? People say, Sunnah, people question, where is the Sunnah written? So what we learn is that all the hakams of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders, the Nabi came, Allah sent His prophets for guidance to us. What was the task of the Nabi, the Prophet? They brought the complete orders of Allah, the Sharia, and the Prophet sallallahu said, that as, as I have practiced, that's what you need to do, imitate me according to my Sunnah. According to my Sunnah. The scale that I've established, Allah says. Just like the Quran says, the scale 
and this is bilqist the deeds and balance say subhanallah whoever has in his life the sunnah mubarak the blessed sunnah in his every action he has got the complete religion of islam the person who does not have the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has no deen in his life 100% guarantee i tell you you can run around the world looking for it but he's got no deen in his life that's it the shaitan is only he's following the footsteps of satan devil he has not complete the completion of islam is with the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam So do we reject this point I'm saying today? Do you do you reject this verse? Yes, one verse I've proven to you this point. Down this mizan scale if we don't weigh our deeds according to the sunnah of the prophet sum using the weights and measures of the sunnah because he's our role model. Face appearance labas dress code standing sitting eating drinking walking everyday movement life movements our whole deen is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and every sunnah will save you from azab. And if you don't, if you have sunnah, there's no azab there. Wherever there's sunnah, there's no lana there. There's no lana there. So you're safe from punishment, or not? I ask you the question. Conditions for a person. Always a person is within two conditions, two circumstances, states. How many? Always is in two of either states, not third, not a third. Which are they? Either Allah's mercy is on him, or Allah's azab is on that person. Say Subhanallah. Judge yourself what which one are you under which cloud are you under or am I under Allah has told us the mizan the scale subhanallah So either I will be under the cloud of punishment or Allah's mercy there's no third cloud so in this moment time which cloud are you under which position are you in say it loudly say it 100% rahma mercy say subhanallah May Allah Taala give us death in that state May Allah give us death in that state. In that state that you die, that's the position you will be in ongoing. Remember this point. Sometimes maybe you do khatams during your life, oh life long do certain things, but that won't give you success at the time of your death. Yeah, do you understand what I'm saying? You don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah? So what will you say to me? Oh, he's this, he's this, he's um saying wrong things, but whatever condition you will be in at the time of death, that's the condition you'll be in when you rise up after. We have the desire but we're lazy. I want to pray salah in jamaat. No problem. You got the kalama, you got you recite the kalama. Allah says I'll give you the solution, I'll give you the cure. Say subhanallah. If you're weak, go to any country in the world. If you take this cure, then inshallah you'll become a strong Muslim. Five times salah you will pray you and your children. They will observe parda hijab. Doesn't matter. Don't need to play uh, um, leave your physical boundary. Just do amal on these learnings. So the path has been opened up for us the solution have to buy a ticket no need to buy a ticket get a visa go anywhere to live just do amal on this point here your children will become walis of allah here allah nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us the solution this is the reason the azab punishment azab comes to you the the deen allah has prescribed to us given us the framework when you don't do amal on the framework that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wrote to us if you want to be safe from punishment what should you do then allah taala's akams orders instructions practice them do you understand the point and when you according to the sunnah practice allah's orders then mercy will come to you mercy and to do those actions what should we do to inject us with the the capacity and the passion then rasulullah sallam gave us a hadith what did he say allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that to be saved from the punishment of allah any person who wants to be saved from the punishment of allah and to be saved from the punishment there's no action greater than the dhikr of allah that can save you from the punishment the adab of allah this is the hadith that i shared with you in the beginning So if you want to be saved from the azab and punishment of Allah the what should you do do the dhikr of Allah Rasulullah sallam said there's no action under the sun that will save you from azab more than dhikr of Allah do you understand the point now yes if you don't understand explain to me then we'll explain again if you don't understand if you don't understand why why is Allah Taala said that the dhikr of Allah it is will it will save you from Allah's azab why what's the reason how how does it do it how will it save you because this reason the zikr of allah will save in this way when you do zikr of allah remembrance of allah what will happen then is then on you allah's orders instructions will become easy for you to follow when you do zikr of allah it will become easy for you 
Because who stops you from Allah's orders? Your desires and shaitan, your nafs and shaitan. So Allah says, to compete with nafs and shaitan, I've given you dhikr. When you do my dhikr in my remembrance, then nafs and shaitan will get weak, down, and you will become strong and powerful to practice Allah's akams. And when you become strong due to dhikr Allah to practice the akams, then Allah's azab will be eliminated and Allah's mercy will replace it. And that's why we do dhikr Allah. So now I ask you a question. Since you have started doing dhikr Allah, have some of your actions got stronger or not? I ask you. Are the sins reducing or not? Then, then Allah's words are haq. Allah's kitab is haq. Allah's Rasul Salaam's words are haq. Truth. So you all sat here. You're proving that what you were before, many times before, is there not a difference now, positive? Yes. So that's why I encourage you, as soon as you become weak in dhikr, then you'll be weak in your amal. If you want that you want to strengthen yourself, then Rasulullah Sallam has given us a beautiful solution. The more you want to make yourself strong, the more then you should do dhikr of Allah if you want to be strong as a believer. If you want your children to become pious,